So this is an example of immiscible liquids. We start out with a gas phase mixture, no, no liquid present, 75% A and 25% B, these are molar values. Then as we increase the pressure, we start to condense, and component A condenses first. We can have just one component condense because the liquid phases are immiscible. And so component A condenses when the total pressure is 1.6 bar. When the total pressure is 2.4 bar, then component B starts condensing. And the question is, what are the vapor pressures of each of these components? So the important thing about vapor-liquid equilibrium when we have immiscible liquids is that when the liquid is present, it doesn't matter if the other liquid is present because they're in separate phases, so they exert their own vapor pressure. So if we have liquid A present, it must exert its vapor pressure. If we have liquid B present, it must, must exert its vapor pressure. So if we look at the case where the, the pressure total is 1.6 bar. So we have the vapor mixture, the pressure of A must be the mole fraction of A times the total pressure, and the pressure of B must be the mole fraction of B times the total pressure. 0.75 times 1.6 means pressure of A is 1.2 bar, and the pressure of B is 0 0.4 bar. Since at this condition A is is condensing, this must be the saturation pressure. This is the point where A starts coming out of the gas phase. As we continue to compress, we can't increase the pressure above 1.2 bar. So when we get to a pressure of 2.4 bar, well, pressure of A is now the saturation pressure of A because we already have liquid present. So the pressure of B must be 2.4 minus 1.2, which is also 1.2. And since this is the pressure, the partial pressure where B is condensing, this must be also the saturation pressure B at this temperature. And so the important thing to keep in mind is that A exerts its own vapor pressure if the liquid is present. B exerts its own vapor pressure if the liquid is present. They don't mix, so they don't affect each other in the liquid phase.